This tutorial is in response to some of the questions I've had from the community regarding plugins and what plugins I've been using for Visual Studio Code. So I guess my biggest secret is that I don't really use Visual Studio Code. I, I use it to show the tutorials because I think that most of you are probably using Visual Studio Code. So I use PyCharm uh, for most of my work and this provides me other tools as, as well as using Python um, I also develop in PHP, so I'm using PHP Storm. So I've just got used to using these tools essentially, and that's why I use them. And I guess it's a, a good point to make that Visual Studio Code isn't the only software tool, development tool out there. There are other tools, and PyCharm is a, a good alternative uh, to have a look at if you, if you want to have a look beyond Visual Studio Code. But this tutorial is about plugins, uh, for Visual Studio Code. Now, I didn't want it to be one of those tutorials, top five plugins, etc. I'm just going to take you through a process which you can use. And what I'm hoping here from the community is for you to kind of input in the comments and just suggest other plugins that maybe I haven't mentioned because there's obviously lots of them. Um, and then maybe I can recreate this tutorial into a bigger tutorial and give you more of a comprehensive guide and share that knowledge with everyone else. So let's just go through a basic setup. I've removed all my extensions here. I'm not working from a fresh Visual Studio Code, but I think I've uh, removed all my settings that I have now. In the tutorials that I make, I don't tend to use any of these tools. Um, you'll be surprised. Um, and I was kind of trying to, I've been making you do things a little bit manual. I've been suggesting ways to do things. Um, for example, uh, with the PEP8 tools, I um, showed you not too long ago, going manually through that list and changing it. Of course, there's automatic ways of doing that. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of these extensions. So the first one you probably want to get installed, of course, I say, of course, what you, the first one you want to install really is the, the Python extension. So this is going to come with Linton debugging and lots of other cool tools that we can hook up to our application just to speed up the process of development. And I guess that's essentially what these tools are providing us. In short, a way of uh, saving us time. So let's go ahead and enable that. So once it's enabled, um, you may need to uh, refresh. There may be an option there to kind of refresh. So I've enabled this tool. Now, there are some instructions here. Let me just remove this down install python open up and create a python file and start coding yeah okay but then it gives you some other things here setting up your environment so let's just go through this process of setting up your environment so once you've installed this extension what you can do is go down the bottom here and it actually um, shows you what version of python you want to use or you have installed on your computer um, and i'm just going to select this option here because this is python 3.9 this is in my um my vent folder here uh, so I've selected that, and what you'll probably find now is you've got this new folder here in your project, VS Code, a .VS Code folder. Inside of here, we've got, we have the settings. So this is pretty powerful because in here we can set up some of the um, tools. For example, we want to run automatically when we're working with Python. So if you've been watching my other tutorials, you've seen um, the process of um, I spoke about PEP8 not too long ago and how we can use that style convention. And there was a few tools that I've mentioned and that allowed us to kind of manually go through our code and change our code to meet the PEP8 style convention for Python. Well, we can kind of set that up automatically here, for example. So with this tool now enabled, with this extension now enabled, we can go ahead and we can define a lot of different settings here. Uh, so let's just go to um, the editor uh, format on save. So we're going to ask Python to format when we save the file. So we'll turn that on to true. We need a comma. So that's the first setting here. So we're going to need some commas here. So I'm asking Python uh, to basically save when I save to format. So I need to tell uh, now Python what I want to format or how I want to format. So what I can now do in my project, I think I've already got mine in, well, installed. That's the settings, that's not what I want, on the console. 
Uh, so let's just bring up the console here. Um, so what I can now do is just uh, pip install some tools. So let's uh, pip install auto pep eight. Okay, pylint and then the pylint uh, Django tools. So these tools here are going to provide us me provide kind of a baseline for me to kind of be able to utilize uh, and check against my code. So here, um, pep eight the Python style guidelines. So auto pep eight is a tool. Essentially, I'm going to a request that every time I save, we're going to run that tool and it's going to automatically update my code uh, to meet the PEP8 standards. The PyLint tool, if you go through the documentation, this is basically an um, analysis tool which looks for programming errors um, and it helps also to enforce kind of coding standards. So we've got a specific one here for Python and also Python Django. So go ahead and install that. There we go. I think that's already installed anyway. So now what we can do here in our settings is we can now define our formatting provider. So that's going to be python.formatting provider. And now we can define. We've got um, auto pep 8. There we go. So that hooks that up. So basically now what's going to happen every time I save my document, Auto Pep 8 is going to run. It's going to style my Python page to try and meet the Pep 8 style guidelines. Okay, so I can do the same thing also with linting. Um, so uh, Python dot uh, linting enabled. I'm looking for, and that's going to be true. And then I can define um, it to save or to run on save. So um, this is going to be lintin.lint on save. True. There we go. Okay, so basically what I'm doing when I save my document, I'm going to be running the auto pep 8 and enabling lintin to check also my my code. Right, so now we've got this in place. Let's just um let's just see this in action. So going into my code here, so let's just grab a a view. Um so let's just go ahead and just remove some spaces. And obviously the end space. So if I now just go ahead and save, obviously the the convention, the Pepe convention, is have two line spaces here, and now it's going to nicely format the document for you. So if you would have a look through the documentation for Python, the Python extension, uh, the two other features really that you would probably want to start using is the autocomplete and IntelliSense. So here we have a uh, support here for example you can see that when I start typing in some Python keywords I've now got a choice of um, commands that I can select automatically and that's going to help you kind of speed up the process of development. So what we do also have now is if I hover over some of the code we have some additional information. The Python extension does come also with Linton so it does indicate or try to indicate where there's error in the code. So here, for example, if I remove the colon there, you can see that potentially the underline is indicating that there is a problem in the code. So that's all very useful. Now let's go over to the next extension that you probably want to install. We're kind of building on top of this. Uh, so let's install the Django extension here. Um, so this is the Django extension. Okay, so this is going to provide us some additional features that, again, is just going to um, help us speed up the process of development. So next up is Django. You may have already started utilizing this. So type in Django into the extensions here. And this is what you're looking for. It's quite a few downloads. Um, so enable that and let's just go back into the view. So this really builds upon the Python extension. So whereas before we had class and we had some drop downs here and we can tab that and that will help us quickly write code. We now have additional options here installing the Django extension. You can see we've got uh, more options here. So I can quickly build a, a class here, create view, a class based view. And you can see that it's going to set up the basics um, there for me to build upon. And obviously, again, that's just about speeding up development. So this tool is going to come with loads of snippets like that to help us 
uh, build our application really quickly. So I think this um, does also focus on our templates. So let's just go into a, a template, for example. Um, so I believe uh, installing that, that's going to highlight. So you can now see that um, the HTML is now highlighted where before it wouldn't have been um, if we didn't have this installed. Um, so we've got some highlighting here. Uh, so we've also potentially now got the option of typing in some keywords and you can see how quickly then it is to kind of build a block. Um, so we can start to utilize this to help us code in our templates too. Now, one thing we're working with Django HTML, it doesn't tend to work nicely with the other HTML um, beautified type of extension. So um, actually kind of formatting these pages. So if I, for example, type in div here, you can see it's a very kind of manual process going on here. Um, so potentially I want there to be a way kind of to help me so I don't have to type everything in. Now you've probably seen in my tutorials, I tend to do this all the time. And this is a really thing, easy thing to kind of set up so we can avoid doing that and speed up the process of creating these HTML tags. So let's have a look at uh, actually applying that. So if you go over to file and then go into the uh, preference and settings here, what we can do here is if we look for um, Emmet, uh, I think it's the include. Okay, so what we can do here is we can define. So the problem here is that we're using HTML pages, but there's also Python on it as well. And I think what happens is that the other extensions that are designed to actually style these pages, um, HTML pages, they see these other, they see the other code on the page and they're not then quite sure what type of page you're working on. Um, so it doesn't understand the code within it, the Python code. So here essentially what we're doing is we're just going to define um, a, the Django HTML page. So what's going to happen now we've applied that. Uh, let's go back. So now what we can do is just type in um, div for example and you can see we've got the ability now to quickly build these elements in place as if you're just working with a HTML page. So it does uh, definitely speed up things. Um, you can see how quickly it will now be to utilize some of these tags. So what we want also is the ability to kind of quickly add um, other items. So now we can do that utilizing the uh, Django package here. So quickly make a CSRF token or potentially um, a, a block. So we've got now all these options to quickly build within our HTML pages within Django. So if you look through the Django documentation, the extension that we're using, um, there were some additional settings that are suggesting. Um, so for example, I think here in the settings, we can have file associations. So if you go into the, the Django here, it gives you some of this code, how to configure. Um, so we've, we, we did this in actual fact, um, and then we've just kind of applied this. So just looking in this uh, extension at the end, some of the settings, um, you can make a launch.json file here in your VS code and just add this too if you want to look at um, debugging your extension. So that's also available. So that's how to do that if you weren't too sure about that. So you probably want to kind of format your HTML pages um, to get them nicely indented. So uh, Control Shift P, you can see that by default, um, if I format this document, it's going to say there's no format for Django HTML files installed. So we can automatically configure that with some of the other popular tools you might want to use to beautify your pages, but I use Beautify. So go into the extension. It's nice and quickly, nice and quick to set up. Um, select Beautify, enable that, and then just go back into your code, Control Shift P, and then you can go ahead and beautify the file and just select HTML and it's just going to find all the HTML and format it for you. So this could take some setting up, particularly if you're using other tools um, and also if you're working with JavaScript, etc. Uh, so 
I find that um, by default, that's one of the quickest ways of setting up. Of course, if you've got any other suggestions, then please just leave them in the comments. Okay, so other tools then. So the first one um, that's kind of handy is the one you've probably seen, SQ Lite. So this tool here, if you enable it, that and now enables or allows you to kind of, if you're using Django's default database, just allows you to right click and then actually go into the database. So uh, right click and oh, I don't think I enabled it, have I? I just uh, make sure I have not enabled it. So right click and then you will then have the option. It's enabled. I might need to refresh. Uh, okay, and so now it's working. Right click, open database. So that gives me the database down here. And so I can actually view the tables and the data within, and I can go ahead and right click and show the table and the data within, for example. So that's just a handy little tool that I've been using if you are just utilizing the SQL Lite database in Django. So for those who want to um, add some more kind of formatting here or highlighting, there's loads of highlighting tools available, uh, extensions that are available. One being, for example, bracket pair here. Um, so colorizer. So let's go ahead and install that. This is version two. It's quite a popular extension. Uh, so I installed that. Let's have a look now. You can now see it's kind of highlighting. And now that's something that might really annoy you or not, um, or might be really useful for you, but it does help identify the ends, particularly when you're working with views. So let's just have a look at a, a view, for example. So it does kind of start to highlight uh, the brackets, for example, uh, particularly if you've got quite a, a nested statement going on, that can be useful. But like I said, there's loads of those tools. Now, the last thing is obviously the style. So if you go to File Preferences, you've got um, some pre-built in themes. So the color theme, so you can access some themes here. There's obviously hundreds of themes that are available. Um, one maybe popular theme, uh, I think I've... Uh, Got it here's I see a few people using is the uh the night owl um or yeah, night owl so enable that um you've now got uh some different options that you can utilize so let's have a look so we've got uh light and dark so if you wanted a kind of nice little view there so we can set the different colors, um, you know, italics. Okay, so there's hundreds of them. I just wanted to show you, if you didn't know how to kind of set the, the theme, that's how you're going to set the theme. So download a theme, set it, and then also you've got additional options here in preferences and then color themes. Well, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully that was useful for you. If you do have any other suggestions, uh, I know there's a whole host of other Django specific extensions out there but please leave some comments um, and let us know if there's anything that you think is important that i've missed as i could include in a, a later tutorial or any extensions that are just generally useful thank you very much and hopefully i'll see you in the next tutorial